those people are your number one assets. I know that's a very common term in HR. People are our number one asset as an organization. They're also your number one expense as an organization as well. So if an organization is going to grow, strategies are key to everything. But people need to be the biggest part of your strategy. Welcome to In the Thick of It Toolbox, the special series where inspiration meets implementation. Here, we don't just share success stories, we equip you with proven tools and strategies from seasoned founders, turning entrepreneurial dreams into actionable plans. Prepare to be enabled and empowered on your journey. You're not just listening to a podcast, you're gaining access to an essential toolbox for your business success. Let's dive in. Welcome back to another episode of In the Thick of It Toolbox. Today is a special episode focused on how small to medium-sized business owners can effectively manage human resources and payroll. We'll be speaking with Chris Goheen, president of Workforce Go, an HR and payroll solutions provider. Chris will share his insights on the common challenges business owners face when handling HR and payroll internally, including staying compliant with complex regulations, managing time-consuming administrative tasks, and keeping up with rapid innovation in HR technology. We'll discuss best practices for leveraging technology to enhance employee engagement, boost productivity, and make human capital management an integral part of overall business strategy. Chris will offer tips on finding an HR partner that matches your industry, priorities, and back-end systems. Whether you currently handle payroll in-house or are looking to outsource these functions, you'll learn valuable perspectives on aligning people and operations with business goals to enable your company to grow. Welcome back to another episode of In the Thick of It Toolbox. I am joined today by Chris Goheen, who is the president of Workforce Go. Um, We'll get into that in a minute and, and talk more about what it is they do. But real quick, Chris, you and I, we've actually done a lot of recording together in the past, and usually it's fun and jovial and kind of wacky, but today we're going to keep this very educational. So we can still have fun. Give us a little bit about your background. How have you spent the early parts of your career before joining Workforce Go? So I've had quite a bit of transformation over my career uh, in the early years. So heading into school, I actually had the notion that I wanted to be in accounting. That was the very first thing that I ever wanted to do. So I went that route. I actually worked for a public accounting firm and thought that was a CPA route that I wanted to go. Um, Did that through school and um, eventually determined that it wasn't as exciting as I thought it was going to be. So I've done a lot of networking things through my career. So uh, I had the opportunity to then kind of silo accounting into just payroll taxes um, and start working for an organization where we did tax management for Fortune 500 companies. So we did that both from a technology standpoint as well as an outsourcing group where we would actually manage everything on their behalf. Really enjoyed that, escalated my career through that and ended up managing a very large group through all that. And then got more into the account management, actually working with the organizations. What were their strategies? What were their goals? What were their problems? I liked working with the people. I liked hearing all that. I liked problem solving in those areas rather than so much processing within there. Through some acquisitions and some other things that happened with the organizations I was working with, um, payroll and human capital management or HR started coming into play from a technology standpoint and started getting my hands into that more and more and more and helping organizations with that as well, actually selling and helping them formulate solutions for their organizations. So that's really how I got into the HR world. It started with tax and evolved into that and payroll and where we are now and was very technology driven and focused and, and getting solutions for them. And I've continued that evolution to where I am now, um, currently still helping organizations with their people and how they engage with them and and what they're looking to accomplish through those engagements, through solutions uh, like human capital management and payroll and time and management in those various areas there. You mentioned you started down the the CPA path. Do you have those letters behind your name? I do not. No, never, never finished that out. You took the off ramp before. uh, Yeah, they went this whole master's degree and five years and you got to sit for the CPA exam and only like 20 percent of people pass it at a certain point in time. And I was just like, "Mm, yeah, let's uh, take this exit ramp right off of here for that. So (laughs) not for me. Not just that, but I mean, knowing people that have gone that route, looking at what life is like for them and particularly during tax season and uh, yeah, they can have that. Yeah, I remember those days where you uh, actually shift your schedule. So you work a 36 hour schedule instead of a standard schedule for that. So it's uh, yeah, tax season, not not the life I wanted there. Yeah. So How long have you been 
with Workforce Go and what was it that made you join the company? So I've been uh, leading Workforce Go for eight years now. So what made me join, a little bit of story about how Workforce Go came about. So I worked for a very large global software firm here based out of the U.S. And I ran and led their North American sales division for human capital management, HRMS is what it was called there for that. And had a a couple of colleagues and friends approach me and, and they wanted to develop their own practice and start getting into that from their perspective. And I was at a point in my career where I felt it was a good time to take a little bit of a more of a challenge on and help build a practice from the ground up type of situation there. So left that organization that I was with, came in as a practice manager for this. We wanted to, with technology, make sure that we had the leading edge of solution that we were coming out with. So we went into looking at cloud solutions we could bring to the market rather than your traditional on-premise software solutions out there. Got through another uh, couple other partners that were in the industry and looking to accomplish that. They had a little bit of shortcomings in certain areas. How do you implement software? How do you manage software? How do you get into the cloud business? And those were expertise that we had. So we eventually merged two organizations together to form what is today Workforce Go. I have been leading that ever since uh, for the past eight years. You mentioned you're ready for a challenge. And man, if there's one thing I know about you, you're a hard charge and you're a driven person and, and a hard worker. So challenges don't scare you. No, typically they don't. I'm always looking for that next one. Uh, sometimes looking for the challenge gets the best of you. I'm a very visionary person and always looking for that next horizon to, to get to. And sometimes that can get the best of you. You get a little ahead of yourself, but always looking for that next challenge out there. It's no surprise that you guys have done as well as you have. Let's talk more about payroll and HR, just from a general conceptual level, take the technology out of it. So running a small business myself, I think about early days when I was actually the one doing payroll and so forth. Man, (laughs) you've got tax filing deadlines. You've got all kinds of compliance. You've got, it's just crazy. Man, maybe elaborate for me what kind of these challenges are in dealing with payroll in a small business environment. Well, really, I mean, you hit on a, quite a few key things there. And I know you said to take technology out of it, but I think one thing to relate is back to technology. Technology is a very rapid pacing change right now with AI and everything going on. But payroll and HR are on that same pace from that. And it and really comes around all the regulation changes um, that are happening out there and how organizations keep up with that. So as you mentioned, with payroll, it's not just the ability to issue a paycheck to someone or a direct deposit to someone. There are so many regulations and rules that you have to stay up with that you may not even know about. So that's where it comes in and helping small businesses, medium-sized businesses, even larger businesses to stay up with what's going on there. A good example of that is a lot of um, states are now adopting what are called same-day pay rules. So it's not a matter of, well, I have somebody separate with an organization and I'm on a bi-weekly payroll cycle, so I'll pay them next Friday. No, the, the regulations and legislation say you have to pay them right then and there, and now you're taxed taxes are due right then and there as well. So it's about being able to help employers stay in compliance with all of that and things that they're not aware of and then can help them manage because the penalties and, and things that come down from that are very dramatic, especially when you're a small business organization. Yeah, the government takes um, people issues very, very seriously. People and pay issues very seriously. Very seriously. Very seriously. So you want to, I mean, most organizations are worried about getting out of compliance with uh, regulatory items around their business in general, but the people ones are what will really hit you when you get into labor dis- uh, disputes and payroll and and those type of areas. They, they are coming down very hard on that now. You mentioned this trend, same day payroll or something like that. Mm-hmm. Same day pay. Man, what are some other things that are coming down the pipe or or have recently popped up that people need to have on their radar? The big things going on right now are around benefits and healthcare and mental health. Those are the big industry topics right now. So healthcare itself is actually going through a complete reform. There's what's called the CAA uh, Act, that the, uh, the Consolidation Appropriation Act that has come out that is going to revolutionize how employers offer affordable health care to their employees. So there are actually lawsuits that are happening now where firms are going out to the employees themselves for big box employers and going, they're not offering you the most affordable health care under the new CAA Act, and we'd like to file a lawsuit 
on your behalf uh, type situation. So there's a, a lot happening within that. And uh, that act is going to revolutionize how healthcare is costs and is offered to employees. So that's a big one coming out. And mental health is the next big thing. That is a benefit and something that employers need to be engaging with, regardless of your size, small, medium, large, for all organizations and the tools that you offer to help with that right now. You talked about HCM, human capital management, as well as payroll. There is kind of dividing line between the two, right? There is. Could you maybe explain a little bit more about what the HCM side is? Yeah. So we talked about the fast paced nature of, of HR. There's a lot of acronyms out in the, in the industry. There's HCM, there's HRMS, there's HRIS. And really that talks to the evolution of HR. Really what it boils down to is human resources today is about people engagement and how you make them part of your business operations with all that. And that's really how we need to be thinking about human resources out there. So HRIS is a little bit of an older term. It's it's human resource information systems. And what it was doing for organizations is just the ability to track information. If John called in and wanted to know something about his benefits, you could quickly see what benefits he had or how long he's been with the company or that. It's just a repository of information. HRMS took that a little bit to the next level. It was a, a human resource management system. So you got a little bit more engagement happening there. And now we're in the capital management or the people engagement side. So it's really how do we provide the tools with the people related information to make sure they're engaged in the business and what we need and how we're keeping them productive on um, that we have out there. So it's really the difference in the evolution that's happening out there. It's not just about the information and where we store that anymore. It's about how we utilize that and how we engage with our team members now. We'll talk a little bit more about specifically the kind of work that y'all do in a minute. But for people that aren't working with someone like Workforce Go, how are they managing payroll and HCM? It depends. So again, speaking of that landscape of, of businesses out there, small, medium, and large out there, you know, in a small area, it's it's still very spreadsheet driven these days. It's Word documents, I have paper documents, we have packets of information or spreadsheets where we're tracking. It's very document heavy with all of that, very disjointed, very hard to report on or have visibility into. Medium size because of compliance rules that start to come into place and all that. They need something a little bit more where they can report. They have more visibility. They get into that repository side of that. And then as you continue to grow, it's more about how they engage with their employees. So they're looking for that next level of employee self-service and benefits, enrollment and portals that employees can access and see their information within. So it's all about where they're at in their journey for that and, and what their requirements are within the organization. For someone who isn't working with someone like y'all, how does that organization keep up with all the regulatory changes and tax rate changes and, and all those kinds of things? A lot of times we find it's uh, they don't and it's uh, I do it until I get caught type situation within there. So and and that's very hard for organizations today because it is such a fast pace changing with all the regulations. There are new regulations coming out on a monthly and a quarterly basis in how you engage your employees. So it just takes getting caught that one time for you to realize. Unfortunately, it's it hurts when you get caught with all of that. Yeah. So when somebody gets caught or hopefully before they get caught, they have the realization that it doesn't make sense for, for them to do it themselves. What does an organization like yours provide for that company? Our approach to all of this is we talk a lot about what human capital management is and what payroll administration, and, and those are great things to bring to an organization. But really, it's more about that engagement side. And we look at it in how people are part of the business today. So how do we not only manage and help with all this people-related information, but make it part of your operations and engage those people in your operations aspect of that. So it's not just tracking their information, their dates of hire, their birth dates and all of that. That's great. We can do all that that basic stuff within there. It's not but just about processing payroll and keeping you in compliance. It's about operationally, what do you do as an organization? What's important for your employees to be able to contribute to what you do as an organization and keep them productive and engaged and on a, on a good path within the organization? 
those people are your number one assets. I know that's a very common term in HR. People are our number one asset as an organization. They're also your number one expense as an organization as well. So if an organization is going to grow, strategies are key to everything, but people need to be the biggest part of your strategy. In terms of kind of how you engage with your customers, is this kind of a turnkey, you guys kind of become this for them, or is the expectation that they're still going to play a big part in that employee engagement and, and you're providing them the tools and, and strategies to help do that better? What's kind of the dividing line? Yeah, it's really, really the latter of what you said there. So we typically meet with an organization. We want to understand what are your goals? What are your requirements? What do you do as an organization? And then we're going to help provide the tools to engage with your people out there and really do that and bring that to the table, bring those efficiencies to the table. What we want to take out of the mix is the administrative work. So you can focus really where you need to focus with your people out there. We don't want you to have to worry about reminding somebody that they're on PTO or that their birthday is coming up or remind them to do something. The technology takes care of that. We want you focusing on what are the best benefits, what's coming down from the Consolidation Appropriation Act, and how do I engage with my team members on that? How do I take somebody from this level and offer them learning to go to the next level? So really, how do we grow as an organization? So we bring the tools to the table in order to do that while keeping you in compliance with everything that needs to happen. Yeah. And that's the kind of the HCM side of things. And as far as the payroll goes, do y'all do the quarterly tax filings or do you guys put them in a position where it's just a, hey, sign here and go? What does the payroll aspect of things look like? Payroll aspect, we offer actually the full gamut. So there's a couple options for organizations with, with any vendor in the industry out there. Some specialize in certain areas out there. There are solutions that offer what is called an in-house model of payroll. That is, you have this, the software, you can process your payroll, you can issue checks, direct deposits, and you do your own tax management within there as well. Typically, that takes going out to government websites, submitting your payments. They may produce the returns and the forms for you to file out of the software uh, within there, but you're doing all that yourself. Typically, you have an in-house payroll administrator doing that. Then there are what are called outsource solutions where you are actually submitting your payroll to an organization. They are then taking it from there. They are issuing your payroll checks. They're doing your direct deposits and typically managing your taxes as well. The tax management is typically the number one reason people outsource their payroll. They're like, I don't want to do taxes. I don't want to mess with that compliance. I don't even want to get in trouble. I want to give that to somebody else. So we actually offer all those options and a hybrid of those options within there. So it can be a full in-house model. Model. It can be a full what we call payment services model, or it can be a hybrid where you process your payroll, but we will do the tax management for you as well. So kind of all flavors available out there. I don't want to have anything to do with taxes. Just <laughs> tell me what I need to do. Yeah. How much do I pay? Where do I send it? Take it off my hands. And most people are like that as well. So which is why there's a, there's cost advantages and other advantages to keeping it in house and having control over that. But it's I do same sentiment. I don't want to deal with those taxes. I don't want to know that my liabilities crossed a threshold and now it's not due Wednesday. It's due Monday. I, you guys take care of all that and that responsibility from that perspective there. I sleep better at night knowing that I have people to do that. <laughs> there's a term and I kind of know what it means, but. I'm sure you can help me understand this better. PEO. What is a PEO? A PEO is a model that was introduced a, a long time ago. It is essentially what's called an employee leasing organization. So PEOs, most of the time you leverage a PEO as an organization as buying power. Um, it really came around benefits, um, which again, the whole landscape of benefits in the industry there is, is changing. But what a PEO model brings to the table is the employees of an organization are actually not the employees of that company. So let's take your organization as an example. If you used a PEO, your team members would actually be employed by the PEO. And it brings a conglomerate of individuals together. So you have more team members and your buying power for benefits and other types of offerings. You have more buying power at that time. You can get benefits cheaper and you can offer benefit costs cheaper to your employees by doing that. So you're essentially leasing employees is, is what you're doing. They still work for you. They still perform for you, but they are essentially employed by the PEO themselves. So they get a much 
broader base of team members to bring better benefits to the table. They do all your payroll, and they do all the HR, and they do all of that. It's not necessarily temp employees. They are full-time employees with you. They're just not employed by you at that point in time. There's a distinction between that and, and what y'all do, and, and what causes somebody to choose one over the other? PEOs used to be very big with, with more small size businesses because, again, it allowed an organization that was 10 employees or 12 and 25 employees to have the ability to offer benefits, which are very valuable to team members at an affordable cost to those team members. So if you were to go directly to a provider out there as a small employer, your cost is going to be extreme and you can't absorb all that as the employer. You have to pass some of that to the employee. So this was an option for them to be able to do that. It also brought in the landscape of the compliance side. I don't have to worry about HR. I don't have to worry about these rules because these employees are employed by the PEO. They're responsible for that and everything that happens there. So I didn't have to worry about that. Again, with the changing landscape that we have going on, especially with benefits right now, that's becoming a little bit less of a need and the options that are coming out with healthcare for, for smaller employers, that's becoming a little bit less of a need for them out there. So it'll be interesting to see how that landscape continues to change. How many employees do I get to before I start to say, I need to look for a partner like Workforce Go? Well, I mean, there's all sizes. And you know what really dictates that, I, I'd answer that question in twofold. One is going to be just what the requirements are of how you engage with your team members or what you need to engage with your team members. Before you get into that, though, first and foremost, what typically drives engagement with an organization like us is compliance related. So there are compliance rules that kick in based on certain number of employees that you have where now you need the support of technology and to be able to administer that. COBRA administration, as an example, when you hit 25 employees, you have to have COBRA at that point in time. So you need something to administer COBRA at that point in time. When you get into the 50 and 75 range, now you have um, reporting requirements around EEO or OSHA or other types of compliance reporting that kicks in based on all of that. But those, again, those regulations are starting to change now. We've seen a lot of changes around W-4s and how we do that I-9 and employment verification. That is a never changing landscape and it's coming downscale. So it's not so more I can wait till I get to this size now. It's more I've got to act on this earlier. So we're seeing the landscape of adoption of tools for human capital management come way down for this. Not just I need a payroll solution anymore. I really have to manage this information. The other side of that that I was talking about there was what's important for my business and how do I gauge my employees? So it may not be just HR or just payroll that I'm looking for. Maybe learning is something very important. I have training and compliance and things that I have to send my team members through, whether it's security training or cyber training, depending on what industry you're in. So maybe a learning management tool is very important to me for that. Or I do a lot of recruiting. I have, based on jobs that we have, I recruit a mass volume of people. So something to administer applicants and onboarding and these things are very important regardless of the size of my organization. So it may be more feature functionality related rather than compliance related uh, within there as well. So there's, there's a couple factors that drive that. When you were talking about that certain thresholds, you now enter into new waters. I think about myself, there's so much going on day to day and it wouldn't even occur to me that, oh, we crossed X number of employees and now we have to go do insert fill in the blank. And I got to imagine that you save a lot of people's sanity by helping manage those things for them or guide them in the right direction. And we do. We talk with a lot of organizations about that. It's, again, not only what your goals and requirements and strategies are today, but as you continue to grow, that's where we're going to help you. As you hit these thresholds, we're going to let you know we do a lot of information and knowledge sharing with organizations. Have you thought about this or this is coming down? These changes are happening out there. How do they impact your organization? Some of them are federal. Some of them are state specific. Some of them are just you know, Department of Labor laws that are happening out there. Some are just tax changes they need to be made aware of um, that are happening. But we try to keep you in the know so you can be proactive to those decisions. The decisions are still ultimately the employers. Again, we're providing the tools to help with that. The decision is ultimately yours, but we want to provide you the tools and the information to make that decision and manage it. Who are you typically engaging with? What role are you typically engaging with within your customer's organization? So typically we're talking with a CFO. 
the C-level players within there. And, and you brought up the dynamic of payroll versus HR a minute ago. We see it different in a lot of organizations. Sometimes payroll sits with finance. Sometimes it does not. It's combined with HR or however they, they determine as an organization. But a C-level player like a CFO is typically involved. Depending on the organization, you may have a people officer, somebody that is specifically required. And your administrators are, are in there as well. So your HR, your payroll administrators, because they're the day-to-day operations that are happening. So they need to make those decisions. What's a little bit unique about us, and again, the approach that we take there is, and, and what's happening with the people landscape in general is that you can't can't just think about how I manage the information and the people. It's how is it part of the business side? So we see a lot of the operational folks coming into our conversations as well. If it's a construction organization, it's, you know, I've got field operators out there and, and they're coming in. Well, this is what we do on a day-to-day basis in the field. And how do we engage with our team members out there? So we're seeing many different roles start coming into play. It's not just I'm talking to the HR manager or the payroll manager any longer. It's the C-level players because organizations are seeing they have to think about people as their overall strategy as an organization. Yeah, it is much more broad than just making sure they get paid on time and paid correct. Yeah, that's almost the easy part now. Interesting. So if somebody is thinking about bringing in somebody like you, what do they need to consider as they evaluate different options? So I think that goes back to thinking about your business, your operations, and what's important for you and for your team members to engage in with the organization. It's not just going out and finding an HCM solution that's going to do HR and benefits enrollment and recruiting or payroll and all these various areas out there. It's about For us to successfully grow as an organization, what's most important for us to engage with on our team members? Is it learning? Is it is it just payroll or is it time management and how we do that? What's most important to us? And when you're looking at solutions out there, you need to look at those solutions, identify those priorities for yourself and identify a solution that is strong in the areas that are key to you as an organization. So you may have a solution come to, to the table for you and they're the best re- recruiting solution on the market. Recruiting is not important for you. So, and their time doesn't do what you want it to do. So it's very hard to find the all in one. Everyone has their strengths and their weaknesses in solutions, some focus in certain areas. And sometimes you do a best of breed approach to things. But I think it's identifying what your organization does, what's important for you and what you really need to engage with your team members on. And that needs to be a focus. Make sure you check the other boxes, but that needs to be the strength of the solution for you. I think this kind of ties into what you were talking about, but industry specific things, like you mentioned time, like how does it track time from one industry to another? There may be different needs, different requirements. And then the other thing that jumps out at me is, again, you talk about what do you need, the backend systems that you might need to tie in with is another big part of it. And so considering, does this system play nice with these other systems? And I know that's an area that you guys really focus on is working very, very well with other systems that are critical in the workflow. Yeah, um, because there are, and again, this ties back to the people being part of the operations, and you got to take both into the mix when you're when you're thinking about this. And and human and capital management does not address everything operation wise within an organization. Just doesn't do job and project management or AP and AR GL uh, any of those areas. But that's a very key component for a business. So how do you tie? the people-related aspect of everything into those. And that's through integrations, which I know you focus on as well, but that's through integrations and a lot of the conversations that that we need to have. And, and organizations need to think about from a, from a people perspective, how do I tie everything together? It's not just focusing on this silo there. We've got to think about the broader picture. All right. One of my favorite questions to ask Uber drivers is, what's your craziest passenger story? And I've heard some absolutely wild ones. I know a lot of people in HR And similar to those Uber drivers, people in HR have some crazy HR stories. Without naming names, you got a crazy HR story you can share? A crazy HR story that I can share. I don't know how crazy the story is. We had a client that was in the cannabis industry and would call us and we'd have talk and, and they're trying to, to manage team members and, and actually managing a lot of, you know, how do I do management of my team members using the product 
too much. So I found that very interesting. And, and we had a lot of conversations with them about, you know, they can't clock in and out. At the, we had a, a pad where they would go up in and do a facial recognition and it couldn't recognize because it did a retina scan. Couldn't recognize them clocking in and out. And their product affects the retina. And their product <laughs> affects the retina. And uh, the team members were using the product a little bit too much. So I think that's one of the more interesting ones that I've heard. And I got a call and I was having a conversation with them about it. And I would Normally, I'm a good solutions guy, but I was like, I have no solution to that uh, whatsoever. I've never been approached with that situation or have no solution to that other than maybe a policy. Dial it back, guys, yeah. or wait till you get off. <laughs> yeah, dial it back. <laughs> one of the two that we have there. So that's one of the more unique ones that I've heard most recently there. Where would someone begin their search for a payroll HR provider? So I encourage a lot of things when you're searching. One, definitely do your interview, do your due diligence. Don't just go to one and go, wow, they check the boxes, do all that. Get, get some comparison. But as far as finding those to do the comparison, um, start with some of the solutions you have today with that. If you have an ERP package today, they most likely have a marketplace or partners that they work with out there. I would definitely do that because there's already a level of engagement. And again, that circles back. It's a reoccurring thing that I brought up several times. People and operations working together. So do your due diligence starting there first. and then. Just searching the web. I mean, there's a million and one different, here are the top 10 providers in the marketplace out there. But also look for organ, um, solutions that may specialize to certain things that you do out there as well. So if you're in construction or you're in manufacturing and distribution, um, there are solutions that, that key to that that will help check some of the major boxes for you right off the bat with all of that. So web searches are always great. There's many different associations out there, APA, SHRM, that can help you with that as well. But I think the number one place to start is some of the tools you already have in place today, like your ERP system. For somebody who is considering transitioning their HR payroll systems, what are the things they should be doing now to prepare for that to be as smooth a transition as possible? Where are your pains? Um, identify where your pains are today. So again, one of the biggest advantages of, of an HCM solution is it takes the administration out. So what are you doing manual? We talk with a lot of organizations where 60% of HR's time is spent doing administrative work, paper, email, phone, engaging face-to-face -face in meetings just to get things done type situation. Where are those at? And how can we take that small ancillary stuff off the table? But then again, meet with the operations side, what's very key to them and have those requirements ready when you're looking at solutions out there. So if you have a field team, what are they going through in pain wise? Because if you can solve that, you can keep people productive. That's where the happiness is going to come in. The basic things of being able to view pay stubs online or request PTO off or, or those, that's not the important stuff. It's what's key for the organization within there and your team members. Are there any data considerations? Like we do a lot of work in the, in the CRM space. And so oftentimes when we're migrating people, a big part of it is, hey, you got to go clean this data up before we can really take this on for you. Are there things like that that people need to do? There is some data cleanup, but typically we're doing that in the process out there. So yes, do be aware there is some data cleanup. And that goes into the aspect of when we're moving to a tool like ours within that situation, it's not the goal of just to move what you're doing now to a new place to do the exact same thing as you were doing then. So that comes into the data side of, look, yeah, we want to get your data out, but what's important for you for the data and where do we need to clean this up a little bit there? We also find sometimes a lot of things were not being done correctly with old data within there. So we need to clean that up as well. So yes, there is a lot of data analysts, a lot of bringing data in, reviewing it and making sure for what we want to accomplish moving forward, do we have the right data and, and is it clean and good data for us at that point in time? Chris, is there anything else that we haven't covered that you would want people to know about this? We've covered a lot of important stuff in there. I think that the major things that came out of that is when you're thinking about HR, payroll, HCM, HRMS, whatever acronym you want to use within there, it's about your people engagement and your operation side. Make sure you're keeping those together when you think about the solutions that you're looking for. Identify your requirements and what you need, but 
keep on with the regulatory changes that are happening, right? The, the, the landscape, I, I attributed it to technology and what's happening with AI right now is very fast paced changing and it's going to have a dramatic impact on employers out there. So stay on top of that or engage with somebody to help you get the knowledge and the information around what's happening there and the tools you'll need in order to manage that because it can have very good benefits for your, your employees. I mean, benefits that make them want to come to your organization and be productive and stay long-term. And that's ultimately the goal that everyone has with their team members. Chris, for anybody who is embarking on this journey, how would they go about finding you and, and your team? So a lot of different places that, of course, our website, you can go out to myworkforceco.com and find us there. I mentioned earlier looking and where to start with that, uh, whether it's a general web search, you can type in a human capital management or any of those and we'll pop up in those searches as well, or start with your ERPs. Again, what's very important to us is bringing those two worlds together. So we work with a lot of partners in, in the ERP space and we're typically in their marketplaces. So you can start there and find us in those areas there. But generally our website is, is a good place to go. All right, so biggest thing, make sure that you're combining the operational aspect with your payroll and HR, mm -hmm. get everybody on the same page and focus on the biggest pain points first. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, there you have it. Chris, thanks so much for coming in and being a guest on In the Thick of It. Oh, thank you so much for having me. That was Chris Gohe, president of Workforce Go. To learn more, visit myworkforcego.com. If you or a founder you know would like to be a guest on In the Thick of It, email us at intro at founderstory.us. 